Good evening, everybody. Bob Mater here with NAFI. Glad to have you with us. Tonight's guest is Ken Veyard, who will introduce himself in a few minutes. He's with Pilot Partners. Tonight we'll be talking about logging time. Uh, I stole uh, that title, I guess, from uh, William Kirshner's book, uh, Logging Time and Other Lies. I hope none of us do that, but uh, or FIB anyway. But uh, it was the title that came to mind uh, when I uh, when I was putting this together. Um, it, before we get started, uh, some housekeeping stuff. Uh, as usual, if uh, we like to do this as a uh, as a group discussion. Right now, I have all of the microphones muted except. Uh, Ken's and myself. I'll open up the mics, but uh, that means I'm going to have to ask everybody to make sure your own mics are muted uh, so we don't get a lot of background noise, reverb, all that other good internet uh, and audio-visual type uh, problem that uh, makes makes a meeting uncomfortable. If And if uh, I do get background noise, I will uh, mute you individually, I'm afraid. So with that, good evening, Ken. How are you? Good evening. Thank you for uh, inviting me to come and present this topic to everybody. I'm excited to share some of the stuff that we've been working on and what uh, is a great tool for a lot of pilots and specifically some tools for instructors to make login time easier and better. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I'll throw the screen your way in just a moment. Um, and cr to give credit where it's due, Rick Todd, one of, our, one of NAFI's board members, uh, uh, met uh, Ken. Where, where did he meet you? We were at the Mod Arrow event down in uh, uh, Conroe, Texas, outside of Houston. Ah, okay. Well, I'm going to toss the screen your way. So, Ken, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, uh, I've been flying since 1997, and uh, let me make sure I'm sharing the right screen. I'm still sh sharing the correct Yes, you are. Before, right? Yes. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So I got my private license back in 1997. Uh, I was 20 years old and uh, got a ride from a friend in some neat little red airplane. I didn't think much of it and just fell in love with aviation. So I went and signed up for flight school, and then my instructor quickly let me know how interested of a flight I just got off of because I just got out of a beach stagger wing. <clears throat> Not just some fancy red airplane, but my first <laughs> GA flight was in a beach stagger wing. Uh, Very nice. Wish I, wish I could redo that flight so I could really enjoy how special that flight was. Uh, but it, it it was still enough to get me bit, and I had to go learn to fly. So I did my private pilot's license uh, and took uh, between March and October of 1997. And during that time... I wanted to log my flights electronically and couldn't find any solution. So being a brand new software engineer myself, I started writing my own software to do it. And that's how Pilot Partner was born. Wow, that's pretty cool. And then, of course, since then, I've gone on to add my uh, instrument rating. Um, I have not done commercial, but I am really looking forward to earning my flight instructor certificate at some point in time. Uh, but right now, I dedicate my time to creating the software solutions of Pilot Partner, and, um, but I will be uh, an instructor because I do love teaching. Very cool. Yeah, we had a great conversation uh, during the, uh, the setup here, and uh, you sound like a flight instructor. So I'll, you can take that as a compliment, or you can, you can just hang up on me now, I guess. <laughs> no, I, I, I appreciate it. I did spend 10 years as a skydiving instructor, so that's where I kind of got some of my... Uh, knack for teaching from well you've got more courage than i do because i can't i cannot work up to the idea of leaving a perfectly good airplane i've yet to leave a perfectly good airplane i've left uh, lots of airplanes but none of them were perfectly good <laughs> we won't go into we won't go into uh <laughs> skydive school airplanes at this point <laughs> i'm sure that's a that's a conversation for another day i think anyway <laughs> So I'm going to let you go ahead and start uh, your presentation. I'll probably be asking some questions, and the, the mics are pretty much open with a couple of exceptions. So if um, you hear somebody waving sure. their hands or something like that, we'll go on from there. Uh, absolutely. I do welcome uh, any comments or uh, questions during the presentation, and then we'll try to save some time for 
uh, any in-depth discussions at the end. So uh, again, uh, a little bit about myself, but we've just kind of went over most of this. I've uh, been doing both flying and writing aviation-related software since 1997. Uh, anybody who wants to get a hold of me can at pilotpartner.net. Uh, you can get to our website, pilotpartner.net, or Twitter, oh, Facebook, oh, yeah. all those great places. Um, feel free to reach out any questions that you have. Uh, we do have a offer for all NAFI active members to uh, basically have a free subscription to Pilot Partner. Um, so please take advantage of that. I uh, would love to have you on board and uh, use our tool. Today's agenda, um, basically what I want to talk about is some of the barriers to converting yourself over to an electronic logbook. Um, there's four simple steps to start in with an electronic logbook, and we're going to go over those. Um, if you're anything like myself, uh, you have a big book, a uh, uh, paper logbook in front of you and you're saying electronic logbook is just not for me because I don't want to have to enter all these old flights. Uh, and we're going to talk about some strategies on how you can get all the benefits of electronic logbook without having to do all of that. Uh, we're going to talk about logging new flights electronically, calculating well, what we call a carry-in total, back enter in some flights, uh, import in all your flights if your cell phone plastered to my ear for that whole time listening to this. Uh, hold on one moment. I'm going to have to meet somebody there for... All right. There we go. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about import in all of your flights if you're lucky enough to have them already in some sort of electronic format. And some of the other concerns about electronic is how do you handle logbook endorsements uh, actually electronic signatures of flights, and what do you do with this electronic logbook if you're going to show up to a check ride or an airline interview or something else that traditionally you think that only a paper logbook will suffice. And um, with electronic logbook, you can completely supersede your uh, paper logbook if you uh, do it right. And finally, we're going to talk about our CFI dashboard. These are tools specific to flight instructors to help you get more out of the logbook experience, give your student more information on each flight, better feedback, and really simplify the whole thing so you can spend more time flying and instructing and less time dealing with logbooks and paperwork. <clears throat> so how do we get all of this great information in our thick pilot logbook into an electronic format. So the four steps to start logging electronically. Step one, start by logging your next flight electronically. There are a lot of logbook providers out there. Uh, Pilot Partner is not the only electronic logbook out there. Uh, obviously, I think it's the best, but you have to be the best judge of that. Um, th there's other providers who do some great, great work, and there's some that I don't like very much for specific reasons, but you need to find the logbook, electronic logbook that fits your style and works for you. And the best thing to do is download them. They should offer you a free trial of some sort. Um, and start logging your next flight electronically. Don't worry about what's in your paper logbook. For a little while, you're going to keep your paper logbook current while beginning to log electronically. You just need to get electronic login as a part of your daily vocabulary of every flight that you do, and you'll find that it becomes much quicker and easier. Um, when I land, I usually shut down the engine, pull out my iPhone, log my flight right there when I have the numbers in front of me. It takes me 20 to 30 seconds. If I want to write a decent remark, Maybe it'll take me 45 seconds to a minute, depending upon how detailed I get. But that's all the time it takes. Even in hot Texas summer where I live in Austin, Texas, I can usually get my flight logged long before I break out into a sweat inside the, um, the hot Texas summer. So I never forget to log a flight, and I have all my information right there. Step two is to convert your your um, <clears throat> convert your electronic logbook to be your primary logbook and just leave your paper logbook at home. What I end up doing now is even, I still keep a paper logbook. 
Uh, and my reason for keeping a paper logbook is if I ever get that dreaded phone call from the FAA say, please produce your logbook, I'm not going to give them the nicely printed, easy to read, everything matches up version. They're going to get my chicken scratch and they're going to have to work for whatever they want. So I log my flights electronically. And uh, my last flight in my paper logbook right now is March 1st. But all my electronic flights are current. Once every couple months, I open up my pilot partner account and pull out my pen and I catch up my paper logbook. I usually find myself catching up my paper logbook right before I have to go for a biannual flight review or a IPC check or do something where a logbook is needed. But Pilot Partner has some new features that even makes that a not necessary anymore. So step one is to start, just start convincing yourself to log electronically and just worry about your flight. Step two is start to fill out your paper logbook second. How long you spend between those two steps is completely up to you. It's whenever you feel comfortable with step one. Step three, you want to start thinking about, well, what flights do I want in Pilot Partner? Uh, and this is where you're going to go start back in turn some flights. And I usually tell people to think about your currency. What, how many flights do you need to prove that you're current so that your electronic logbook will tell you that great currency information? Because that's where the real benefit of electronic logbooks are is in calculating your currency automatically. Uh, with Pilot Partner, it'll tell you how many days you have left for day currency, night currency. If you fly multi-engine, it will break that out separately. When your flight review is due, and you can set up all kinds of custom currencies. Uh, I flew for a, a, a flying club that had a Cardinal RG, and our insurance company had some additional currency requirements for the insurance company that was different than any FAA regulation. So I was able to set up a custom currency to track that to make sure I was current within the, uh, the insurance regulations. Then the final step is you want your totals to be accurate. So how do you get totals accurate without entering 20 or, you know, 15 to 20 years of flying? Well, you use your carry-in totals feature. And I will show you a little bit of how that works. Now, some nice to have things that you can do optionally whenever you want is to log all of your endorsements. One, it's a good backup. What would you do if your paper logbook disappears tomorrow? It's a very scary event for a lot of pilots. So with Pilot Partner, you can actually take a picture of each endorsement in your paper logbook and you will have a permanent copy of all that uh, valuable information. And some pilots, no matter what, will want to get all their flights in their electronic logbook for lots of different reasons. And there's some import features, or you can sit there and spend you know, a long time and manually enter all your flights, depending upon how much you have. Um, now, myself personally, and even though I wrote this software, I only have the last year and a half to two years of my flying career in Pilot Partner, and the rest is um, in my paper logbook. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to get to uh, enter in all my flights. I will eventually, but I haven't gotten there yet. So logging new flights. The way I say this is when you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. Don't worry about when to start electronic logbook. Every flight you do that you do not log electronically, you're putting more information in a paper logbook that is the best that 1920s technology had to offer. So start creating your digital log. The sooner you get a wealth of information in your digital logbook, the sooner you're going to be able to use the benefits of the electronic logbook for those currencies and flight totals. Um, if you have to fill out an 8710 form for a check ride to sub submit to the FAA, you're going to thank yourself for having an electronic logbook. Even filling out an insurance application for aviation insurance, 
is a lot of work using a paper logbook. Electronic logbooks make that real easy. Uh, log it in the airplane or at the airport before you leave. Uh, Pilot Partner works both on Macs, PCs, and on any mobile device, uh, primarily iPhones and Androids and iPads. So you probably already have the tool in your pocket to make this work. Uh, all you have to do is start using it. And then update your paper logbook as needed. So get in that rhythm of logging electronic first and then just update your paper logbook as needed. When I need to update my logbook, uh, I spend 10 or 15 minutes to log you know, a couple months of flying. And I also find myself writing less and less in my paper logbook. My paper logbook is just the bare minimum requirements, just the numbers, tail numbers, and dates, um, just the things I absolutely need. And I let my electronic logbook to be my real detailed record of all my notes and pictures and everything that I do. That's the other great thing about electronic logbook. If you took a couple of great pictures during that flight on your iPhone, attach it to that flight so you'll always have that record. Now, I've been kind of going pretty fast, so I'm going to take a quick break before I talk about the carry-in totals to see if anybody has any questions or comments about what we talked about so far. Oops, and I was muted. Sorry about that. Uh, um, I've got, I'm opening up the mics for everybody. For everybody. Uh, again, uh, again. If, if uh, uh, you can hear me hesitating. If you're if you're not talking, please mute your your mic locally. I don't want to be the bad guy here, because you just heard all that reverb that we got and rustling and stuff like that. Anybody have any questions for Ken so far? Yeah, my question is, uh, who has access to electronic logbooks? Is it online so that uh, you or anybody else can uh, get to it, or how does that work? And that must be my good friend. That must be my good friend Don Knight. How are you doing, Don? Hey, okay. All right. Thank you, Don, for the question. Um, the electronic logbook, Pilot Partner. Pilot Partner is a cloud-based solution, so your data is stored on in a secure cloud that uh, is protected by uh, username and password, so that only you have access to it. Uh, Pilot Partner does support uh, social media sharing, so you can select if you want to actually share a flight uh, and post it to Facebook, but most pilots don't want to, uh, and that's completely under your control. Um, but other electronic logbooks, um, and like the original version of Pilot Partner, store all the data locally. And there's pros and cons to that. Uh, some people are more concerned about the data security and would rather have the data stored locally and not uh, in the internet in the cloud somewhere. But when you store it locally, now you're responsible for making your own backups and keeping that data safe. And <clears throat> you would think myself being a software developer and writing the original version that I would be really good at doing my own backups. Well, I don't even have a copy of my original data that I had in Pilot Partner that was about 15 years old. So I lost a lot of my own information by not backing up my own data. So that's why we've gone to the cloud-based solution, because now our servers are professionally managed and professionally backed up, so you don't have to worry about that, and your data is stored securely on our servers behind your username and password. That brings up a, a question. Don's question prompts me here. Um, most products, yours included, they they have an option to import uh, files in various formats. So a lot of people have kept spreadsheets over the year, Excel spreadsheets or even Lotus 1, 2, 3 spreadsheets to show my age, stuff like that. Um, isn't that true? Isn't there, isn't there a way to yeah. import these files? Yes, most um, electronic logbooks and Pilot Partner included have a import routine. Some are better than others. Uh, I spend a lot of effort on designing our import routine to be very flexible and accept um, a wide range of different formats. So 
If you can get it into an Excel spreadsheet, you can import it into Pilot Partner. Okay. And uh, I, people use that to come from one of our competitors to us, or some people who have just been using Excel or Google spreadsheets to track their uh, flight time, they can convert that into Pilot Partner relatively easily. Okay. Yeah, and again, that brings up another question. Uh, if you imported it, can you erase it from the cloud and then later on, a month or two later, can you re-export it? Correct. Um, one thing I'm very adamant about with electronic logbooks and, and, and is core to how Pilot Partner works is once you enter data into Pilot Partner, that is your data. You own it and you can always get it back and you can always export it. That includes, you know, because we are typically a subscription-based service. We charge $29.95 a year to use the software. But if you choose no longer to renew your subscription and your account has expired, you are still able to export your data because that is your data and you can always get that out. You know, that brings up another point, and I, and I hope you and the other folks that are doing this stuff stay in business forever um, yep. and, you know and everybody's benefits from robust competition but companies have been known the software companies and server companies have been known to go uh, to go bankrupt and go out of business and the assets are gone what about would you recommend keeping a local copy for yourself or what would you yeah, suggest I do that is a great great uh, suggestion and I've got a enhancement uh, that's on my product roadmap that's going to specifically address that. Um, I do recommend that you export your data, you know, every once in a while, just so you do have a local copy, but I'm going to automate that for my users. So on a schedule, maybe once a month or once a quarter, I will just send you an email with the data exported. So if Pilot Partner were to become unavailable one day uh, through whatever reason, you would just have to go back to your re most recent email and there is the vast majority of your data. You know, the only thing you would lose is maybe a week's or two's worth of data, and that would be a lot easier to recover and deal with than losing 15 or 20 years of uh, your flight history. Hey, so hey Bob. Something. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I was just. I, I thought you were done. I, uh, I, I. If you don't mind, I'll just jump in with a quick question. Um, so I, I. I did the arduous effort of updating all of my many years of flying into an electronic log book and uh, another product a, a while ago. And I, I guess I can, I can echo your, uh, the virtues of having all this stuff electronic. I mean, it's, it's, ab it's, it's pretty fantastic when you can generate a report to see all the, the different flight time by type and, and those sorts of things. Um, I, I guess the, the piece that I, I feel is kind of lacking in, at least in, in my product and maybe in the industry is, I mean, we're, we're flight instructors and, um, I do try to take pretty good notes on each of the lessons I give, um, and it, it it doesn't seem like. Well, I, I, let me just turn around the other way. Is are you aware of any features in your product that would allow uh, an instructor, for example, to get a, a well formatted report on the lesson history of a student, for example, um, and, and you know just being able to take more detailed notes as opposed to got hamburger at, at the vineyard this weekend. And by the way, that, uh, that's, that's you, Nate, isn't it? Yes, I, I saw Nate's name. Um, okay. To the microphone moving. Okay, uh, I didn't. All right, good, thanks. <laughs> that is an excellent segue to the last uh, item in my agenda, the CFI dashboard in Pilot Park. Hold and, on a moment. i got to find who that was. Uh, everybody, please mute your mics. The CFI dashboard in Pilot Partner is a new product line that we've introduced into Pilot Partner a couple months ago that is going to address exactly that scenario that you're, you're talking about. And our first step that we have available right now already allows for more detailed notes and for you to have that, but now we're going to format it in much better reports and uh, actually go more lesson-based and dashboard-based. So not only can you see better notes and lesson plans, 
but you can look at a glance and see your students' progress through a specific program. And when you turn all items on the dashboard green, you know, as they meet certain criteria, you know they're ready for their check ride. So the uh, Pilot Partner CFI dashboard is the only electronic logbook that I'm aware of that is specifically catering to that um, flight instructor need that uh, you were just mentioning. So uh, that was a great little suggestion for, um, <clears throat> for what uh, we're going to talk about here in a little bit. So um, what I'm going to do is carry on just a little bit more on how to go from paper to electronic and then we're going to end with the CFI dashboard and uh, we'll have a couple more breaks to ask questions um, here or there. So if you've got a question, hold on to it. We will um, definitely have time to talk about it. So once you have converted yourself to using the electronic logbook, and you're starting to see your currency actually tell you a realistic picture, now it's time to get your flight totals accurate. And that's where the carry-in totals feature comes into Pilot Partner. What I recommend is you enter enough flights so that you go back in history so that you've entered a full page of your paper logbook. And this assumes that you trust those totals that are at the bottom of your logbook like you see here on the screen. If you have a whole page entered, you can simply log into Pilot Partner and enter your totals to date from the previous page into Pilot Partner. And what that will do is increment your totals correctly and always display the correct total in Pilot Partner. So for example, this screenshot you see at the bottom is actually my current logbook. I'm sitting at just under 700 hours total time. And I only have 147.9 hours in my Pilot Partner account, but I have 536 more hours that's only in my paper logbook. When I log into Pilot Partner, it tells me I have 683.9 hours. So the carry-in totals allow you to not worry about all those pages and pages of flights in your paper logbook but still get accurate totals in your uh, electronic logbook. And you can apply a total in every single category. The screenshot you see here is only a small part of um, the options that are available. If you have a total by a specific tail number, you can enter it. If you have a total by a specific type, you can enter that as well. And Pilot Partner will always adjust the totals to include those carry-in totals uh, of the, the logbook. So this is step three in the three-step program. So once you become comfortable with logging electronically, and once you started adding your previous flights so you show your currency as well, then you want to get your totals correct by using the carry-in totals feature. And just to emphasize that a little bit more, back intern some flights. Um, you know, you, your primary reason you do is to log for currency. Uh, if you're ambish, ambitious enough, I recommend going back far enough to your last flight review to make your flight review current. But if that is a year or a year and a half back, you may not want to go that far. Uh, so track when your flight review is due manually, and then um, once you do your next flight review, it will automatically show in Pilot Partner. Uh, but always leave off at a full page in your paper logbook because it makes the math a lot easier when you go to adjust those carry-in totals. Uh, importing flights, uh, one of our questions was kind of around this. Um, we use what's called a CSV file for import. Uh, that stands for comma separated values. Um, if any Excel spreadsheet can be converted to a CSV sheet, and all you have to do is put logical column headers at the top. So you have uh, your first row will have a column that's labeled total time, and then any numbers that's in that row under that column will be imported into your total time. 
Uh, we have some training videos and some uh, good tutorials on how to do this. And of course, if you run into any problems, we are always there to help anybody get their data imported who wants to do this. Um, it's very common for people who are already using an electronic logbook system or who have their own spreadsheets to uh, use their export to import into our system if they want to switch to us. But if you do want to be super ambitious and get all your flights into Pilot Partner, it is much better to transpose your paper logbook into an Excel spreadsheet and then import that into Pilot Partner versus opening in Pilot Partner and adding the flights one by one. You will save yourself a lot of time by going through the import versus doing it one by one. But if you're going to use that strategy, I recommend doing it in small batches. Uh, by doing it in small batches, you uh, will break that project up into achievable pieces. Uh, otherwise, you may feel like you'll never get to that finish line and you'll stall out and not finish. So pick five pages at a time or ten pages at a time, put it in an Excel spreadsheet, import it, and then use the totals at the bottom of the last page that you finished at to change your carry-in total so that your totals in Pilot Partner are accurate. Then take a couple week break and then do your next batch. And I find that is probably the more successful way to do it if you have a large amount of data to import. You know, there's a part of me as a pilot, I, I got to tell you how crazy I am. I'm sitting here thinking about, let's see, I go back to 1994, the first lesson, and all those instructional lessons since 2001. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what one of the other advantages of going through and uh, actually doing this exercise is it's an excellent trip down memory lane um, because you're going to go back and revisit each one of those flights that you did, and it's going to bring back some memories. Um, I still do that in my paper logbook every once in a while. I'll flip back to page one and read all my – comments and remember these flights from 15, 18 years ago. Uh, it's, a, it's, a fun, it's a fun experience. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, there are some services on the Internet that you can Google uh, search for that will allow you to scan your logbook in, and they do this data entry exercise for you. Um, I have not been able to test drive those services yet, so I can't speak for how good they're, um, how good they are, or what the value of that is. But it is something worth considering. Uh, I have a, um, I've been trying to coordinate with one of those services, but um, our schedules haven't aligned to see if we can partner with them and make that a <laughs> more of an in integrated option for our customers. So that is something to consider. So okay. now let's talk about endorsements. What do you do with your endorsements? Do you track them only in paper, in your paper logbook? So if you convert over to electronic and then you go out and say, you know what, it's time for me to get my high altitude endorsement, what does that instructor do? Does he sign your paper logbook? Does he sign your electronic logbook? Does he sign both of them? That's a good option, you know, for you to consider. How, how do you want to do that? Um, Pilot Partner supports two kinds of endorsement tracking. I do recommend that all of your endorsements get added to Pilot Partner or your electronic logbook so that you have a backup. Again, what if your paper logbook disappears tomorrow? So the top picture is a great way to capture your um, existing endorsement in your paper logbook. And as you can see, all I really did was take a picture on my iPhone of my endorsement in my paper logbook, and now it's there forever. The bottom endorsement is how you do it electronically. You, we have a, an endorsement wizard that will make filling out an endorsement a breeze. Um, again, this is one of those competitive things uh, that we're doing in the market that I'm not seeing any other logbook software do. 
Um, I know they all offer endorsements, but they all require you to go through and type the text in just right, whereas we will walk you through all the blanks. You know, it will automatically put in certificate numbers and student names, and it will prompt you for what type of aircraft, and you type in Cessna 172, and it will automatically put that in there for you. And then the instructor can digitally sign it with their uh, finger on the iPhone uh, or using our uh, sign by pen option. So you can mix these two kinds of endorsements in your logbook. And the great thing is when we get to the section where we talk about print in your logbook, which is the next slide, <clears throat> when you print your logbook, either kinds of endorsements will automatically print correctly. So this is a quick uh, artistic shot of what a printed logbook looks like from a uh, from the Pilot Partner Electronic Logbook. And you'll see here that this looks exactly like your paper logbook. It's formatted just like a Jefferson logbook. <clears throat> it's got the same columns in it. All the numbers total up. You get the same totals at the bottom. And you even have a digitized signature on each row where there was an instructor sign-off, just like you would have in a paper logbook. So this is great if you have a student who says, you know what, I never want to touch a paper logbook. That's fine. With Pilot Partner, they can track everything electronically, have their instructor sign each flight, and <clears throat> when they go for their check ride, can click the print button and they will show up with a printout that is every bit as good as a standard paper logbook. You can even go the extra option and go to Office Depot and buy some binding posts and a nice cover, and it will even look exactly like a paper logbook. Uh, and this is also another tool that if you wanted to leave Pilot Partner or um, you know, just stop paying that price, print this out, and this is logbook number one, and start a paper logbook afterwards. And just like you would do when you fill up a paper logbook, you would say, see logbook number one, and start doing flights. So this is a great way that you can uh, preserve all your flight data uh, in a safe environment so that you never lose it. It's just print a copy of it every once in a while and you'll have a legitimate logbook to take with you. I'm going to uh, I've, go ahead. Well, I'm going to anticipate a question I think somebody's going to ask. Uh, has the FAA uh, what's the FAA's stance on a digitized signature? The FAA has recently posted um, uh, one of their most recent news releases and I should go find it and bring it up. Um, basically said this is perfectly legitimate and uh, the rule is um, any, I'm trying to remember the exact verbiage, it's, um, it's very vague, it says in, in a format uh, acceptable to the administrator and that's never defined anywhere. Um, but this format has been tested uh, through several check rides uh, it has been tested at airline interviews. I've read some blogs of people who've been hired by the airlines by, uh, after presenting a logbook that looks uh, just like this. And um, <clears throat> it, it, as long as the advantage here is this is a real signature. You know, it will show variations from sign to sign. Um, it is um, protected. Uh, the CFI dashboard has a um, option where the CFI can lock their signature behind a four-digit PIN number. If the student wants to make a change to their flight, they have to remove your signature and they can't add it back. And when the student removes that signature, that instructor will get an email letting them know that their signature has been removed. So it's a good closed circle, secure way to handle those signatures. Um, the use case I talked to one uh, flight instructor about was, well, let's say I had a private student, you know, three or four years ago, and I helped him do his private, and then he moved on to another city and decided to go for his uh, instrument ticket, 
And then he had the bright idea that, you know, if I kind of change one of these flights to say, you know, I didn't do 0.3 hours of hood time, but I actually did 1.3 hours of hood time, and I do that on a couple of flights, I can get my instrument ticket sooner. And what is there to prevent the student from doing that? And in Pilot Partner, in order for the student to do that, they would have to remove your signature, which would generate an email to you to say, hey, your student removed the signature, make the change, and then when they go add the signature back in, they would have to enter the four-digit code of that instructor in order to get that signature back on, and they won't know that. And I put some fun little logic in there. If they enter the wrong code too many times, it um, <clears throat> makes life less, uh, less than fun for that person. <laughs> I kind of penalize them for um, trying to guess the code too much. Um, so there's a good checks and balances there with that electronic signature. Okay, uh, great. The, the FAA has published a, um, I forgot what format they did, but there is FAA documentation out there about electronic signatures uh, in the context of aviation maintenance shops. And the general consensus right now is um, that standard is acceptable in your pilot logbook because they actually hold a higher standard to signatures for aviation maintenance than they do uh, flight uh, currency and uh, login. Pilot Partner Electronic Signature System far exceeds those standards. Okay. So this this printout is um, a makes electronic logbooks extremely valuable. So now, uh, getting into our final topic of the night, and then I'm going to actually um, do some live demo stuff of Pilot Partner for everyone, is the CFI dashboard. And what the CFI dashboard does is links two logbooks together. So <clears throat> the instructor has a Pilot Partner account, and the student has a Pilot Partner account. And our goal is to make uh, pilot partner free for any uh, active flight instructor. So our typical business model is any flight instructor, uh, when they refer their student and their student purchases a subscription, the flight instructor gets a six month bonus to their subscription. Now as a NAFI member, you get to forego uh, all the referral and six month bonuses and you get uh, one year free of pilot partner that's renewable so you, when your uh, one year is up and you're still an active member for NAFI, you get a new code and um, you basically get free pilot partner. But for any flight instructor, we don't want to collect uh, money from active flight instructors. Uh, we want them to see the value in our tool and how much better it makes the training program so that they refer their students to us and that's our um, our target audience. And what this allows you to do is, and if, if you heard earlier, um, I have a history of being a, a, a skydiving instructor and not a, um, a flight instructor. And one thing we did as a skydiving instructor is not only after a, a, a lesson, a jump, it's, it's not enough to just debrief the student and say, this is what you did well and this is what you need to work on. From the very first lesson, we are training the student of how to be, how to effectively self-evaluate themselves. So when we got done with a jump, we would go to the student and ask them, tell me about your jump that you just did. Start at the beginning, walk through all the steps that we did, tell me the things that you thought you did well, and tell me the things that you want to work on. And then after they completed that, then we did our evaluation on top of them if they missed something. Our goal was to get them thinking at a very early stage to be um, a good self-evaluator themselves. So with the Pilot Partner CFI dashboard, I'm trying to introduce a similar paradigm where when the student lands, even on their first flight, under the flight instructor's supervision, the student pulls out their iPhone, 
and logs their flight and enters their own remarks of what they did. Then that flight will show up on the CFI's dashboard and pilot partner, and they can use their iPhone, or they can wait to the end of the day. If they fly with three or four students, wait to the end of the day, and then they can go provide their remarks and sign that flight as a second step. And when you do that, the student will receive an email with all of your remarks and, and their signature, and then that will really create this situation where students start thinking about logging their flights early. I remember when I was a student pilot, I did my however many flights I did before I did my first solo, and what I would do is land, hand my logbook to my instructor, he would fill it out, I would glance at the notes he wrote, but they weren't very meaningful to me. You know, how much can you actually write in a little one-inch square? And I would never go back and look at it. Then when I did my first solo, I got down and take a guess at what I did with my logbook. I handed it to my instructor, and he kind of shook his head and said, no, you're a PIC. You have to log it. I'm like, well, no one told me how to log my – how do I do that? So I see value in changing that paradigm to – teaching students to log their own flights accurately under the supervision of their instructor from the very beginning. And then the CFI can provide their detailed notes. And when I say detailed notes, I encourage you to write more detailed notes because it is part of the permanent record and it will even print on their printed logbook. Um, so you can actually go into details on what they did well what they should work on, and how to work on that. Um, <clears throat> then I talked a little bit about our sign by pen option. So as a instructor and um, pilot partner, you have the option to you know, either use your finger to sign every single time, or you can establish a four-digit pen number and sign once, and then that signature is used every time you enter your pen number. So think of that as like a rubber stamp. Like you get a rubber stamp of your signature, and then any time you enter your secret PIN number, uh, it, it will stamp their logbook for you. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I got, a got a great question from, uh, I'm going to make a hash out of this name, Mark uh, Santa Croce. I think that's the way you pronounce it. Um, can the app? <laughs> okay, thanks. Can the uh, app be both on uh, on a person's iPhone and iPad, will they will they cross-deck each other or cross-fill each other? Yep. Mark, fantastic question, and the answer is yes. Um, you can open it on not only an iPad and an iPhone, and your data will be there with no uh, data synchronization, uh, synchronization or complex steps. It's just there automatically and easy, but it's also available on any computer with a web browser. So, um, Macs, uh, Mac computers, PC computers, Windows, everything. You'll have full access to it no matter which device you use. Uh, even if you need to borrow your friend's computer because uh, your computer's not working, all you need to know is your username or password and you have access to your complete logbook. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So moving on to the you just, you, just got, you just got speaking of endorsements, you just got an endorsement. Anyway. <laughs> oh, excellent, Mark. I look forward to seeing you on board, and uh, you know, for, for Mark and anybody else who's going to give it a shot. If you have any problems, questions, um, you know, do reach out to me. Uh, I I work very hard to keep good customer service because I feel customer service. You you have nothing if you don't have good customer service. Um. So security, we talked a little bit about that. Um, you will have an audit record if someone tries to remove your signature for whatever reason. And, you know, there's a legitimate reason to make a change sometimes. You know, you need to correct something. Pilot Partner will keep that audit record, and you'll have an email record of that happening. Uh, the, if you notice a mistake, the correct thing to do is remove the signature, uh, correct the mistake, uh, maybe amend the remarks to address the mistake that was made, and then sign it again a second time uh, by using your PIN number or your, your finger. And that would be a legitimate reason to do that, and Pilot Partner supports that. 
Okay, so instead um, of ble instead of bleaching the logbook, nobody has ever done that. Uh, <laughs> you're you're actually putting a line through the th through it and doing it the right way. Correct. Yeah. Um, then the final thing that this does is will help automate um, your record keeping as a CFI because Pilot Partner will automatically be tracking your students' flights and the fact that you were tagged as the flight instructor on it and will say, um, hey, would you like me to add this to your logbook for you automatically and bring over all the pertinent information for you, do a quick review, click save. So now you don't have to log all your flights. It will be done automatically for you in Pilot Partner. And um, I think if we did a, um, a poll around the room, how accurate are, is everybody's logbook when they fly three, four, five students a day? You know, are we off a couple of decimal places? Are we off bigger than that? Um, you know, I know some flight instructors who – uh, I've talked to who don't keep as good records as they should. They go, yeah, I think I flew three hours today, so that's what I'm going to write down. Uh, with Pilot Partner, you'll have detailed history of who you flew with, when, and how long it was, and guess who did all that hard work? Your student did. Okay. So that's um, that's one of the, the, the features of, um, of the CFI dashboard. For the, and Lee Fox, we'll get to your question in just a moment. Just be patient. Um, I see it there. I just haven't asked it yet. The um, uh, question that uh, I have now is uh, the record keeping on endorsements. So if I give somebody, say, an initial solo endorsement, obviously I have to keep that uh, for the uh, regulatory requirement. Um, does that automatically... Uh, get stored off, and also the five-year requirement on the TSA endorsement and so on. So uh, I'm going to answer this. Um, I'm going to say yes, and the reason I hesitate is the CFI dashboard is still in development, and we are adding new features. So you can't do it today, but it is on the short list of um, uh, features that in the CFI dashboard you will be able to pull up a student and see all the endorsements that not only you gave, but maybe a previous instructor has given um, okay. so that you'll have a complete complete record of uh, that. The other thing that we have done is um, we have created a system that will um, show you, like if you give a 90-day endorsement, it will tell you when it expires. So okay. that you can quickly glance and say, you know, you only got three days left before that 90-day endorsement expires. So no more guests and no more surprises. Um, it's kind of tracked like currency to do. And um, I can walk you through doing an endorsement real quick. So if you want to add a new endorsement, go to Private Pilot Student, add a 90-day endorsement. And what happens here is here's the text. Here's what it will look like. And here is um, the little wizard. So this specific endorsement, the only thing you really have left to fill in is the make and model of the aircraft, Cessna 172 Model M. Select your instructor. Um, I am not an instructor, so that's why I don't have that set up correctly. Uh, if I was set up as a real instructor, my CFI number and expiration date would automatically be tracked. I wouldn't have to enter it again. And you can sign it, and you can save the endorsement. And now you see, once I save that, the expiration date is there, and I now have 89 days to go. Um, and that date was tracked off of what the endorsement date was. So if I actually gave them this endorsement two weeks ago, I could go back and say that's the date of the endorsement and that's how that would be tracked. Okay. So um, you can do that both. On, I'm showing you right now on the actual computer right now. This is the uh, web browser version. Uh, you can also do that on the iPhone uh, or mobile app version. Both iPhone and Android are supported. Um, so um, the web browser on your computer has more features in it than the mobile does because there's certain things that you're not going to do on the mobile phone. It's just too small of a device. 
So the mobile is um, all the things that you need to do while, while you're on the go. And then you like you won't be importing your logbook on the phone. You will come to the web browser to import your logbook. Okay. Mark uh, asks, uh, how do how do <laughs> how do we add a sim or a flight training device as an aircraft type? Um, stay tuned. That uh, there are ways you can do it, but it's not as uh, intuitive as I want it to be in Pilot Partner. So that is going to be a uh, feature that's coming soon. It's a great segue. Uh, in Pilot Partner, I have this feature request system where anybody can post a feature request, and then every active member gets five votes, and you can vote for um, the item that's the most important to you, and the most votes dictates what I work on next. And you'll see number two in the list right now is um, track and simulator time. Number one is making a better CFI experience of student logbooks. Mm -hmm. So um, track and simulator time, uh, a lot has changed in the last year or two. Um, so I'm going to consume a lot of the new rules with simulator times and make Pilot Partner um, track that um, exactly as best practice for the FAA would dictate. You know, when you do become an instructor, I suspect your uh, CFI knowledge test is going to be pretty easy for you. Uh, a lot of it, yes, because I uh, have crawled through the FARs probably more than some flight instructors have. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that day. Because, um, I, I, I have very fond memories of uh, my original flight instructor. Uh, I actually haven't seen him in about 10 to 12 years, and uh, uh, I'm actually going to go fly to his hometown and see him in uh, uh, about two weeks. So I'm That's really great. Looking forward to seeing. Him. That's he's great. Now a triple. He's now a triple seven captain. That is great. Um, and before we leave this, and this is a great feature, I wanted to come back to another question that I had. Um, if I have a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if I have somebody who absolutely insists on walking up to me with a paper logbook. And I, I'm using this product now exclusively. Is that how painful is that, or is it just okay? I get to just type it in myself and be done with it. Yep. In that case, you you would type it in the same way I'm typing in my flight. So you'll spend 20 seconds logging that flight into your logbook and toggling the different categories. So um, again, I'm doing it on the computer. Uh, the iPhone is a little bit different. I would come here, select today's date. Uh, the aircraft tail number, we flew for 1.2, I flew from Austin to Taylor, back to Austin, uh, pilot command, uh, as flight instructors already checked, put your landings in, you can, you know, if you did nighttime, you can put nighttime in, put your remarks in, student flight, and click save, and that's how painful it was. Okay. So, any other uh, any other features you want to uh, to sh want to show us? Uh, I'm not rushing you. We sometimes run long, and that's okay. the The clock the clock doesn't stop anything here. We're still going, so we can run a little long. Is there anything else you want to show us? Or there's been a, um, there's I been mean, a couple of questions that come up. Yeah, I um, you know my goal with um, this webinar was not to be a deep dive into the features of Pilot Partner. Um, you know, I hope that a lot of you take the time to explore it, but I wanted to focus on how do you get your information into an electronic source of any kind and stop uh, making paper your primary. Um, so I, I hope that that message uh, was useful for a lot of people. Um, and I'll do a quick little look at the, the import routine. Um, oops, I'm halfway through an import. Let me uh, back up and do uh, an import here. Um, let's do start.tsv. I did not prepare for this part of the demo, so I um, expect it to not work very well <laughs> because I've got so many different um, – it, it's 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 like being a flight instructor. You can never get a greaser when you want to show show a student pilot how to properly land the airplane. So I can log a I can upload a um, 
file, the, the CSV file, so think of it as an Excel spreadsheet. And what it does is it shows me a little preview of what's inside the Excel spreadsheet, where I have date, aircraft number, aircraft type, route. Um, for some reason, I renamed that old from, old to, uh, to the different columns. And then what we do down here is map these to different things that are in um, uh, Pilot Partner. Now, this person's logbook that I'm importing uh, came from one of our competitors. It was one of their exports. So you can come down and say, anything that's in this column, I want to map that to route of flight. And I want to map this to route of flight. And Pilot Partner will automatically handle putting those two things together. And you just go through and map it to the different columns. And then when you go to the, the next page, and you see it picked up a lot of it automatically. Mm -hmm. um, then it's going to ask you, walk you through a questionnaire on the different aircraft, the tail numbers that are in your logbook. It picks up almost everything automatically for you, so it knows that that tail number, because we're integrated with the FAA database, it knows that this is an airplane single engine land and it's a T-34B. Kind of excited that he has a T-34B in his logbook. I kind of wish I had one of those. Uh, then we get back to the 172, so it automatically picks this up. But, you know, if this was a glass cockpit um, uh, airplane, you can tick that off. And now you can start creating totals. How many hours have you flown behind a glass cockpit? And you can get that for free when you import your data just by Pilot Partner will automatically apply all flight time in uh, 9080 uh, Romeo, 4980 Romeo. And we'll give you glass cockpit time automatically for that. So you can create additional custom categories to your heart's content. Um, you know, you can log which passengers you fly with. So I can log when um, my mom flies with me, and I can say, how many cross-country hours do I have with my mom in the airplane? I can get okay. that total with my Wow, logic. that's pretty cool. What about, and I, and I hate to do this, I, I'm prolonging this a little bit. I apologize. I'm just going to ask this. What about a recycled end number? You know, for example, uh, there's a there is a 152 in the St. Louis area that has the ta that used to the tail number used to be on a 727, I think. Yeah. Um, um, so, or vice, you know, so I, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. You know, um, you, you that question does represent. Um, a significant amount of uh, support that I have to do for uh, my pilot partner customers. Um, it's a very difficult problem to solve automatically through the import. Um, what I recommend is when you add an aircraft, you can do it one of two ways. Um, so I'm going to pull up uh, my buddy's airplane here, Charlie Victor. Um, and you see this automatically pulls up. This is a Beach S35. Uh, one Charlie Victor, um, and it looks up automatically. But let's say this was a recycled airplane. I flew 111 Charlie Victor back when it was something different, and now it's changed. So what I would do is go back to search again, and it's hokey, but dash B, change it somehow so it doesn't find it, and now you're creating a custom aircraft. So let's say this was a um, Cessna 172 back in the day, and now I can add that. Um, it's not ideal, but that's the best way around it. Okay. All right. Well, I just wanted to know about that, and uh, all in all, uh, we have one. You already have one enthusiastic uh, customer. He he. Mark likes it. He's already he's already banging away. I guess now, wherever he is. And and uh, I'll get the least question. So how do our members get this product? So um, I actually happen to be here on the NAFI homepage. Um, I do not have a username and password to get into it. But if you go to your member benefits section and you're logged into the NAFI um, uh, system. As a NAFI member, down here is Pilot Partner. Uh, there will be a link here that you simply click, 
and it will take you to our login page with a special promo code already entered in that will give you a uh, free year of Pilot Partner. Uh, we offer a 60-day free trial to the general public, so you will skip the 60-day free trial and have a one-year um, subscription to Pilot Partner. When that subscription expires, um, there will be instructions on how to renew that for free uh, as long as you are still a current NAFI member. Um, the other thing I do recommend is once you are a Pilot Partner customer, if you either go to the CFI dashboard, go to the Students tab, and add a new student, you can enter their email address, and we will send them an email to invite them to Pilot Partner. And when they accept that invite, it will automatically link your logbook and their logbook together. And when that student purchases a subscription, you will have six months added to your subscription, whether or not you're on the free subscription or not. So um, if you get two students a year, you get a free, free year. If you sign up five or six students in one year, you get three years free. You can bank your time. My goal is that any active flight instructor earns so many credits to pilot partner that they never have to pay us money, even after they move on from being a flight instructor and now they're flying for uh, corporate or uh, the airlines, that they still have free pilot partner, just because I respect what instructors do. Um, I, I just would like to give it to them. Wow. Well, thank you. On behalf of everybody here, thank you very much. That's, uh, that's a heck of a benefit. Then also under the My Account page, there's a Refer a Pilot option that will also give you the same credit. Okay. So, Great. Um, so that's a little bit about my philosophy behind Pilot Partner. Um, I, I can make an hour demo as I've shown you everything in Pilot Partner, but I'm going to save everybody from that. Um, we do host uh, webinars on occasion. Uh, stay tuned to our Facebook list, or if you're subscribed uh member of Pilot Partner will send out email updates every once in a while well, where we will do deep dives into how to use Pilot Partner. Uh, we have a YouTube channel up with training videos and all that good stuff, so I um, highly recommend um, uh, staying tuned for all that. Can, can, can you go back to your info page for just a moment so everybody can uh, scribble down uh, your email and so on? There we go. By the way, your picture is a lot cooler than mine. I'm I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, we had we had some fun. I took a photographer out who had never flown in an airplane before. Uh, took him for one short flight because the light was better at a nearby airport, and um, he worked twice as hard at taking some good pictures for me. Yeah, he did a nice job. So, well, Ken, thank you so much. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we, uh, in honor uh, of the skydiver here, bail out? <laughs> yeah, I, I, this is Don again. I, I still got a kind of a uh, clarification of my my question on security, and, and I don't think I really stated it correctly. But uh, before I get into the question, number one, I'd like to thank Bob for I know he has a big part in putting this stuff together, especially Ken for the presentation and to say, hey, it looks pretty impressive program. But my question, Ken, is uh, let's say I exported everything. Uh, out of Pilot Partner to a, a spreadsheet, and then uh, one question is: I could erase everything off of the cloud. Say, say I just wanted to get it off the cloud. Say maybe something was going on where I wanted to just double check, you know, and make sure nobody had access to information, and just get it off the cloud. And then, so I did that, and then. Say everything was good, and I decided, hey, you know, I want to get it back up there on the cloud. Can I upload it back onto the cloud? So there's kind of two questions. Yes, you can do basically everything you just stated. Uh, you can log all your flights. You can export it. Um, for obvious reasons, I make it a little difficult to just easily delete all of your flights, but I do have a way to – actually delete your flights from the database so they are gone. Um, and then you can later re-import that file back into Pilot Partner and um, you will have um, 
pretty much an exact copy the way you want it. Yep. Hey, Don, I'm just teasing you a little bit. I'm no attorney, but I don't care where you have it. It's still discoverable. Oh, I, I know. I hate it. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that's that. That's really sounds good, Ken. I uh, really appreciate it. It was something. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, as far as uh, spreadsheets, I being another thrifty guy, uh, I, I don't use Excel. I use uh, Google Spreadsheet or something like that, which you can put on Excel. But is there any problem downloading, say, to uh, to Google uh, Drive's spreadsheet? Or, uh, I think that's what they call yeah, it. Yeah. And I have done that. Uh, I have actually just uh, this week helped a uh, customer take a take their Google Sheet and get it into Pilot Partner. Um, you basically uh, use Google Sheet as save as Excel, and then uh, save that as a CSV sheet, and then import that into Pilot Partner. So if that's something you're you, you're wanting to do and you have any questions, uh, you know, shoot me an email and um, I'll be happy to help you through it. Okay, well, we really appreciate the opportunity to to talk to people that uh, make software like like you have and in, uh, in person. So I really appreciate the presentation. Thank yeah. you for uh, participating and uh, listening. Ken, I got to tell you, it's pretty, it looks pretty neat. Um, so really appreciate it, and it's a great member benefit. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. You're welcome. So, and uh, uh, I'm kind of jealous of you being down there at that end of the world. I uh, I get to go down once a year to go, go bother uh, Jerry over at uh, San Marcos, and uh, I really like going there. So I need to find well, excuses to wander down. Yeah, next time you're in the area, please look me up. I'll uh, love to uh, do some hangar flying with you. That'll work. Hey, put me in that bonanza. I'll be happy. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Make that happen, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next month, I'm um, going to te tease, tease this one for everybody. Next month, we will be talking about Airman Certification Standards. Uh, it's coming June 15th. And by coincidence, the third Wednesday is June 15th, the rollout day for ACS. Phil Pointer, uh, NAFI's Vice President of Government and, uh, and Industry Relations, will be there. Will be uh, our guest, Susan Parsons, is scheduled. She's from the FAA. She uh, she helped lead the committee that uh, put that together, and uh, I believe John King will be with us also to talk about uh, his role on the committee that put together ACS. So don't miss that one. Uh, we will have it out in eMentor for everybody. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing seeing you. In the meantime, uh, it's spring. It's uh, you know you know I always have to leave on a safety message. It's spring. It's thunderstorm season uh, up here. We've had the in Omaha. It's been a cool spring. So not only do we get thunderstorms, but we also get the blessings of ice at the uh, low levels. So teach your students well. Be careful. The only thing I want to read about you is that uh, you got some sort of major award as a flight instructor. So take care, everybody. Thank you much. Thank you.